So, what are vectors? A vector is kind of like an arrow, it has a tail and a head. In Roblox Studio, the tail of such an arrow is at the origin. The origin is always at 000 on Roblox. And vectors also have a direction that they point in. On Roblox, the direction of the vectors is the position of the head of the vector in 3D space. A vector exists out of three numbers. The first number is for the x-axis, the second for the y-axis, and finally, the third for the z-axis. A vector can also exist out of only two numbers, and on Roblox it's called a vector 2. Vector 2s aren't used a lot because UI on Roblox mostly used UDIM2 uh, for skill and offset, else UI would have used vector 2s. Vector 2s work the same as vector 3s, but they don't have a z-axis. Vector 2s can be used for 2D games. Vector 2s and Vector 3s both have pre-calculated values called magnitude. Magnitude can be used for calculating distances in between two parts or two positions. Because all vectors in Roblox have a tail that is always at the origin, the magnitude is just the distance between the origin and the head of the vector. All objects use Vector 3s for position, but they also use the same data type for rotation. Rotation doesn't actually use vectors though, it's only because a vector tree has three inputs for values. So now that we know how vectors work, what can you do with vector trees? You're able to reposition your parts any way you like by setting the position to vector tree that new and then your coordinates, for example 000. You can change the zero to any number you, you desire, for example 3, 4, 6 or something like that. Vector Tree is a Roblox built-in library that has a few cool features. You are able to create a new vector by calling dot new on it. You are also able to do vector tree dot zero or vector tree dot one to make new vector trees where all three input values are either all zeros or all ones. It's also possible to add, subtract, multiply and divide vector trees by other vector trees. Vector trees can also be multiplied and divided by normal numbers, but for addition and subtraction, that's not the case. If you want to be able to calculate the distance between two vectors, vector trees, then do the following. First, get the difference between the two vector trees. The way we do this is by just subtracting one from another. In Lua, it would look something like this. Difference is equal to first vector tree minus second vector tree. After that, we just get the magnitude of our new difference vector. Distance is difference top magnitude. And that's how you get the distance between two vector trees. This works perfectly fine for vector 2s too. Now I'll be talking about the more advanced functions. Those three being colon cross dot unit and colon dot. This will be complicated, so you can skip this part if you want. First of all, we have dot .unit. The unit of a vector is really just another vector with a magnitude of 1. It has the same direction as the original vector. The unit's vector's head position is not the same as the original vector's head position. But both vectors are po pointing in the same direction. If you don't quite understand, remember that they are arrows. The use cases for dot unit are just to make longer or shorter vectors with the same direction. Next up we have colon dot. Colon dot returns a scalar which is a number. The scalar is just how much the vectors are pointing in the same direction. In Lua you use colon dot like this. Local scalar is first vector tree colon dot second vector tree. Let's say that we have two vectors, both with a magnitude of 1. If they are pointing in the opposite direction, then the scalar will be negative 1. While if it will be the exact same direction, then it will be positive 1. This can be used for field of view, but also if two objects both are looking in the same direction. And at last we have colon cross. I haven't really ever used colon cross, but it returns a vector perpendicular to the two other vectors. In Lua you use colon cross like this. Local cross vector is first vector tree colon cross second vector tree. 
And now the moment you've all been waiting for, how to make a flying sheep. I inserted the sheep, I've made a script called movement and inside it I have a sound called meh. Go inside the script after you've created those things and first of all I'm gonna make a variable called sheep. Then I'm gonna make a variable called upforce. This is just a vector tree uh, as a force and depending on how much you put in on an axis is how much the force is gonna be on that axis. If it's zero it's not gonna move on that axis at all. So it's kind of like a direction but also how much it's gonna go forward, which is really handy. Then I'm not gonna have a forward force, this is just a variable to imply how much it's gonna go forward. And the up force is used for jumping upwards, because else it's gonna sli slide along the ground, and we don't want that. Then I'm gonna get the humanoid, which is sheep.humanoid, as you can see right there. And then I'm gonna make a coroutine, with coroutine.create function. And then I'm gonna make a while true do loop. We use a core team because else code under the while true do loop would not fire. So I'm gonna then do sheep it from part, apply impulse, up force. So this is gonna make a jump upwards because apply impulse basically puts a force on a part if it's not anchored. And in this case, it moves it up with a force of 4000. Then I'm gonna wait. 0.3 seconds with the task library because task is more reliable than weight and I'm gonna get the look vector of the primary part like so with the c-frame and this is just the direction that it's facing in from the front then I'm gonna make an impulse variable called vector with a vector tree that new and this is gonna move it forward so we're gonna multiply the look vector so the direction is pointing in by the forward force so it's gonna first get the direction and then multiply it by a forward force except on the y axis uh, I forgot to put dot x here on the y axis we want just 500 but because we don't want the look vector to affect that then we want to put in look vector that c multiplied by forward force right there so this is our impulse then I'm gonna apply that impulse on the primary part by putting uh, it in here and then I'm gonna wait another three seconds with the task library. Then I'm gonna make a function to be able to play my sounds. So play meh with delay. Then I'm gonna have an argument right here and it's gonna be a number or nil because I put a question mark behind it so it's allowed to be nil. Then if the argument is a number by checking the type, the data type of it, then we can wait this amount of delay and then fire a function. And then I'm gonna do script of meh play. So it's gonna play the sound after a certain amount of time that we pass in the argument. If I didn't pass in anything in this function, then the type is going to be nil, it's not going to be equal to number, so it's going to fire the code right here. So it's going to be script on map play, so we don't have any delay at all. Then I'm going to do task defer. Uh, this schedules a function as well, and we can put a repeat loop in there without the code under it getting interfered with. Then I can do play meh with delay. And the delay we want to put in, which is next number 0 0.1, 10. Actually, no. I'm going to chase this a little bit. I'm going to make it local delay time is equal to play meh with delay. Sorry. RNG next number 0 0.1, 10. Local delay time, yeah. And then we do play meh with delay. Delay time. It says it doesn't exist. I don't know why. Then task the wait delay time. There we go. And then we can do here until true is false. So it's gonna loop forever. And then under here, coroutine dot resume. Uh, the name of your coroutine. I've named it with a capital C. So you have to make it the same. And then under it, if the humanoid dies, connect play me. Meh with delay. Now if you play test it, as you can see, it moves forward. What you want to do is put this sheep inside a uh, replicated storage. Then make a script site server script service and call it something like sheep spawner. Then uh, we're gonna put in local replicated storage is game cat service replicated storage. There we go. Then I'm gonna get run service is game get service run service and players. I'm also gonna make the sheep follow you, but you don't have to do that. However, this only works in single player, and I don't care about that either. Then I'm gonna make wave child sheep. That's our template right there. Those are our variables. 
Then I'm going to make a few settings. Uh, this is going to be the grid size. Uh, it's actually multiplied by 2, so it's going to be 8 sheep on the x-axis. And grid y. 4 as well. So this is going to be 16 sheep in total. Uh, actually, no. Uh, it's going to be... Now it's going to be 16. You got to multiply it by 2. Um, now we want to get the grid offset this is just the amount of space in between sheep i'm gonna make it six then i'm gonna get the y position of all the sheep which is 2.25 this is the position that all the sheep are gonna spawn on on the y axis and i'm gonna make a list where the sheep will go in this is to keep track of all of them and i'm gonna make a run connection which doesn't set isn't set to anything yet then i'm gonna make a function called create sheep uh, this will create all the sheep. So we're gonna make a for loop. For x is equal to grid, grid x. Sorry, this is supposed to be minus, um, comma grid x two. For y is equal to minus grid y, comma grid y do. Local sheep is template clone. Um, Local position is vector create new x multiplied by grid uh, grid offset. So this will offset a grid x by the grid offset. Uh, then we're gonna put in our default y position and then y. This should actually be c, but it doesn't matter by grid offset. Then we're gonna do set sheep set primary part c frame c frame dot new position is gonna position it. You have to set the c-frame of the primary part else the uh, joints will move along then i'm going to do table.insert our sheep list with our new clone which is called sheep then i'm going to set the parent of the sheep to workspace and then i'm going to wait a root service heartbeat then i'm going to make a function watch character with an argument called player which is a player then i'm going to get the character of the player which is player the character or if it's nil then player that character added wait this is gonna wait for the character until it's added then i'm gonna set the run connection to a run service that's tapped connect function and then i'm gonna go through all the sheep in the sheep's list like so it doesn't matter in which order so i'm just gonna do it like that without pairs or i pairs then i'm gonna get the position with the uh, player which is the character the primary part of the position and then i'm gonna Get the part where the sheep should look at, which is effective tree new character position dot x, the y, the default y position that it's on, and the chart position dot c. Then set the primary part c frame to c frame dot new sheep the prime part position. So it's going to stay at the same position, but it's uh, the point it's going to be facing in is the look at variable. And then finally. When a player is added in player service, get that player, and then do task the wait ten. Well, I will do three, and then if the list is well, if the amount of things in the list is zero, then create sheep and and then watch character player. Okay, let's test it. Should work. Uh, three seconds. There you go. There are our sheep, and they should go to me. They're not. They're not. Okay, I know what. Uh, the look at is not supposed to be in here. It's supposed to be there. Okay. Now it should work. There you go. That's all. If you have made it this far, then comment down below what your favorite food is. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you have learned something. In the next video, I'll be talking about G-frames, so stay tuned for that. Bye!